production parts need fasteners. That seems basic, but it's a major factor affecting whether additive manufacturing can advance into production. Varrock Lighting Systems has had some very encouraging findings related to fastening 3D printed parts. Let's listen. To make production parts, uh, that implies assembly. Um, and the need to work with these 3D printed components in assembly is what got you thinking about fasteners, thinking about screws. Talk to me about the experimentation you've done related to, related to fastening. Yeah. So my job in our company is working on uh, new manufacturing processes and innovation. And anytime I'm looking at a new process, I, I have to get down to the nuts and bolts and understand so what, to speak. where, where yeah, exactly, <laughs> to, to understand uh, where, where are the limitations, what's the state of the art. So when we started looking at these 3D printing processes and trying to understand how can we make useful end parts, we realized there was actually something missing at the nuts and bolts level. So historically, um, people that used rapid prototyping processes, they might glue parts together. They might sometimes with really big fasteners, they might print some threads. They might uh, use brass inserts, much as we see here, we could put brass inserts in plastic very well. And it works really nice. The, the challenge with that is it's not easy to imagine to industrialize that in a cost competitive way. So we said, hey, why can't we use what we already know? So we use a lot of screws in the three to four millimeter range. They're self-tapping screws. So we said, okay, let's make some bosses with self-tapping screws. Let's find out what works and what doesn't work. So we did kind of a detailed technique that we know from our injection molding background, where we will drive the fastener using a torque controlled tool. We'll, we'll uh, graph the torque and angle curve, understand how it works, understand how it threads together, what the, to what the retention torque is, what the stripping torque is, and going through all all of that, of that detailed work. And from the initial work, it said, hey, guess what? It looks like the self-tapping screws work just fine. So then we said, well, you know what? We need to know something about the process window. So then we reached out to a couple of our partners, um, Carbon Directly and 3D Parts Unlimited for MJF parts, printed some of these boss plates for us. We tested varying diameters, we tested mul multiple replicates so we could get a statistical sample size and we we're able to understand what the process window is and what the design window is for uh, driving self-tapping screws in uh, particularly Carbon, and, and, uh, Carbon DLS and HP MJF parts. We were talking about this earlier and you told me about how uh, you discovered actually a 3D printed boss has the potential to hold a self-tapping screw better than an injection molded one. Talk yeah, about that. It, it was really surprising for us. On the, the large end of the boss diameter, we didn't get stripping. On the small end of the boss diameter, we didn't get breakage. What happens in the injection mold is the, the boss, which is essentially a hollow cylinder, it's formed by a part of the mold called a core pin. Mm -hmm. And the core pin is a steel pin and the plastic melt flows around it. When the plastic melt flows around it, on the far side, the melt knits together. We get what's called a knit line. And that knit line can be a weak point. But well, it turns out with the printed bosses, there's no knit line. By the fundamentals of the process, we're building them in layers. And we tried Z direction, we tried X direction. It didn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, we found out that uh, with these processes, the material properties were actually, in a certain way, a little more isotropic than even the injection molded parts. Mm -hmm.